Uh, you mentioned that you wanted to talk about um, Faraday's law and induction, and that involves the idea of flux. Well, first of all, do you remember what the symbol is for electric flux? Good. That's right. All right. Now remember the electric flux is a kind of measure of how much electric field is penetrating a surface, which we might think of as, um, or the amount of electric field lines penetrating a surface. And this was our general formula for working with that. But we saw that in many cases, this simplified to E times A. In many cases, that formula is going to simplify to the amount of electric field times the area. Well, induction is based on the magnetic flux rather than the electric flux. So we need to move on to that concept. So here's the magnetic flux. Um, so now maybe we call this phi sub E for electric and phi sub B for the magnetic flux. Um, so what would be a logical, this is going to be a measure of how much magnetic field is penetrating an area. So what would be a logical formula for calculating that? That's right, good. And we'll see that in many cases we can simplify that to just E times A. All right, um, and what we're going to see is that um, changes in magnetic flux cause electromagnetic induction. Changes in magnetic flux, flux cause electromagnetic induction. The change in the magnetic flux induces a, uh, a voltage, and then that voltage can induce a current, and that current can induce a magnetic field. So just like source charges induce electric fields, and moving source charges induce, uh, or, well, source charges create electric fields, and moving source charges create magnetic fields, we're going to see that a changing magnetic flux induces a voltage, which induces a current, which induces a magnetic field. Well, let's say that we have a uniform magnetic field, and let's say the magnetic field is spreading all over the blackboard. So I don't want to draw it all over the blackboard. We can say there's a uniform magnetic field that's all over this region of space. Um, and uh, also we have this square of uh, wire. Uh, so it's two meters by four meters. I guess I'm not really uh, trying this to scale, but let's say that it's two meters by four meters. Um, and <coughs> Here's the magnetic field, and this is the direction of the magnetic field, and the wire is in the plane of the board. And the question is to find the magnitude and the direction of the induced current. So why don't you try working this out uh, on paper? Um, and uh, if this is straightforward, then we can go into stuff maybe that's harder. Or if it's not, then we should go back and review the basic ideas for that. So any ideas how you would get started on this? Let's say that the wire has a resistance of 5 ohms. Okay. And this, this square here again is supposed to be the wire.
Okay, should I give you some help with this? Yeah. All right. But it looks like um, it looks like we should go through a lot of the basic ideas here in order to understand how induction works. So um, let's try to understand uh, the basic ideas. Um, so let's go back up. So. Um, to our basic ideas. So what we want to have here is we want to say that we're going to have a changing magnetic flux. And that changing magnetic flux is going to create uh, what is it going to create? It's going to create an induced voltage. An induced voltage. We haven't really used the symbol in the past for voltage, but you've probably seen it in the homework, uh, a big epsilon for induced voltage. But voltages can induce currents, and currents can induce magnetic fields. So this is the general flow chart that we're going to be using. So the first thing we have to do is figure out how to find magnetic flux. Well, again, here's the general formula, but let's try to simplify this into something that's usually going to be helpful to us. So in many cases, we're going to have a situation where we have a uniform magnetic field. And when we have a uniform magnetic field, we can simplify this to this. Now, the magnetic flux is supposed to indicate how much magnetic field is penetrating the surface. How much of the magnetic field is penetrating the surface. So what, which component of the magnetic field is going to penetrate the surface? The component that's parallel to the surface or the component that's perpendicular to the surface? Perpendicular. So we only want to take into account the component of the magnetic field that's perpendicular to the surface. But now we're going to use a trick that we used before for electric flux. What the mathematicians do, or the physicists do, is they define an A vector whose magnitude is the area and which is already perpendicular to the surface. So for example, here would be the A vector. It has a magnitude which is the area and it's perpendicular to the surface. And they focus then on the component of B that, uh, so that is parallel to the A vector. Do you see that if we're parallel to the A vector, we'd also be perpendicular to the surface. So we don't want to focus on magnetic fields that are just skimming along the surface. We want to focus on magnetic fields that are parallel to the A vector or perpendicular to the surface. Well, let's say that the angle between the A vector and B is theta. How do we find the component of B that's parallel to A? Should we use the cosine or the sine? Cosine. Right. So that gives us another version of the formula. B times cosine of theta uh, times A. This gives us just the component of B that's parallel to A, which is the component that's perpendicular to the surface. So this will be our general way of calculating um, the magnetic flux, uh, the change in the magnetic flux. So what can cause a change in the magnetic flux? Well, if the magnetic field changes, that would cause a change in the magnetic flux. Or if the area is changing. We can see that that would change the magnetic flux. Or if the angle between the loop and the magnetic field is changing, that is, say, if you're rotating the loop. If we're rotating the loop, then the angle between the magnetic field and the loop would change. So that would be a change in theta. And remember that we defined theta as the angle between the B vector and the A vector. Any of those can cause a change in the magnetic flux. Um, now, how does the magnetic flux change uh, cause an induced voltage? Well, this is what is called Faraday's law. And it's actually a pretty simple law. It says that
the induced voltage is just basically the derivative of the flux. 